ではお時間となりましたので、これより。We'd like to start the session on the use of blockchain for global insurance business session. We'll have a talk session between two speakers. First, we have from Deloitte Thomas Consulting, Financial Industry Associate Director, Mr. Mitsuhiro Sonobe. Can we have a big round of applause for the speaker? And next, we have from SBI Holdings, the Head of Blockchain Promotion Department and Executive Officer. And representative director of and CEO of SBI R3 Japan Company Limited, Mr. Mamoru Fujimoto. We're happy to have you. Please be seated. We'd like to uh, hand over to uh, Mr. Fujimoto to moderate uh, the session. Thank you very much. Uh, from uh, SBR3 Japan, uh, my name is Fujimoto. Use of blockchain uh, for uh, global uh, chain business uh, is what we'll be discussing. We'd like to take several uh, uh, examples of the uh, use. Uh, from uh, Deloitte uh, uh, Thomas Consulting, we have Mr. Sonobe. Could we hear from you? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, in the financial industry, I'm very uh, engaging in supporting uh, blockchain proposal. My name is Sonobe. I look forward to having this discussion. We will uh, have uh, two cases presented uh, from overseas. And after that, we would like to have Mr. Sonobe explain uh, his uh, case. And uh, the first uh, example will be uh, uh, from uh, Insurance consorti Consortium B3I. And uh, Insurance Solution Company Leisure Tech uh, uh, will be introducing uh, their cases. Uh, so uh, B3I uh, uh, CEO John uh, Carolyn uh, will be giving a presentation, and this has been uh, pre-recorded. Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for this opportunity to present B3I to you today. I look forward to giving you my insights into DLT and hope you leave with a better understanding of B3I and its role that it's play playing in transforming the global insurance industry. So today, there, there are a few things I want to cover. Firstly, I'd like to talk to you about B3I. Then I want to talk to you about the role of B3I in the global insurance industry. After that, I'd like to talk to you about the role of distributed ledger technology in helping us transform the global insurance industry. And then lastly, I'd like to talk about where this type of technology is in the adoption curve and how we at B3I think about this and aim to accelerate adoption. So let me start with B3i. B3i is far more than just a technology company. We came together in 2016 as a global insurance industry initiative to create a market utility leveraging distributed ledger technology and to reduce costs and facilitate growth. We were incorporated as a company in early 2018 and are now owned by 20 shareholders on five continents. During this time, more than 50 companies and 250 domain um, specialists have contributed to the establishment of B3I. We no longer a startup, we employ 50 people and we've long moved past the initial consortium and we now a company that has live applications and we're working on a number of fronts on multiple opportunities within the global insurance industry. So why does B3I exist? What I'll do now is I'll show you a short video that explains the problem that we're trying to solve and then I'll dive into it in a bit more detail myself. Insurance has a problem, an admin cost problem. The industry is a highly connected network of multi-party syndicated contracts that require the frequent exchange of large volumes of data. The processes that support this are ill-equipped to do this in an efficient way. This leads to the unnecessary waste of resources, contract uncertainty, and ultimately more expensive insurance. This is the admin cost problem. At B3i, we are building the insurance network of the future, and we call it B3i Fluidity. 
B3i Fluidity is a network and ecosystem which will house B3i and partner applications built for the market, offer more secure transactions, and facilitate smoother interactions between brokers, insurers, and reinsurers. The B3i network will integrate actors and services across the entire insurance value chain. This means information can be shared with authorized parties simply in one ecosystem where the right people have access to the right data at the right time. Our technology allows our customers to use applications built by B3i and approve third parties or build their own bespoke applications. B3i Fluidity is built on distributed ledger technology, enabling customers to keep complete ownership of their data and yet have all the benefits of shared business processes. This technology ensures parties have one shared, indisputable view of data creating a single source of truth. B3i's first showcase application built on top of B3i Fluidity is a catastrophe excess of loss solution, which will ultimately manage the administration of the full contract lifecycle. This features workflows that are automated and transactions which are secure. It also includes integrated messaging to facilitate real-time interaction and the exchange of unstructured data across workflows. Our products and the B3i Fluidity platform will allow interfaces to current systems to leverage existing technology investments, and B3i is currently working with partners who are also developing their own applications to deploy within the B3i network. At B3i, we believe secure and automated business processes shared across multiple contracting parties will drive market-level efficiency. Higher levels of automation driven by smart contract features will further amplify efficiency gains. Trusted, private and permissioned data and a single version of the truth will remove the need for error-prone manual reconciliations and allow new, better and cheaper products that delight customers. A decentralized network and healthy ecosystem will allow bottom-up change, accelerate digital transformation and create new business opportunities. This is your network, your ecosystem and it can be better. This is B3i Fluidity an end-to-end -end ecosystem to transform the way we interact. So with the admin cost problem that we're seeking to solve, I show with you here, show you here a picture taken this year in one of our customers' companies. These are real files that represent reinsurance contracts that are exchanged, physical documents with wet signatures that are still exchanged today. The problem with insurance is that it's hampered by legacy processes that are decades old. And if it's not physical files, then it's hundreds and thousands of emails that are sent between parties when they contract. contract. These legacy processes and communication systems have evolved to improve quality whilst things have only gotten worse as they've laid, laid layer and layer of checks and balances to address these inefficiencies. If we look at the average reinsurance or large commercial insurance company, they have 35% of their non-corporate costs sit in back office. You don't solve this problem by just adding more people. Adding more people comes at the expense of new opportunities, new growth markets, and designing innovative new products. B3i wants to free these companies from this overly burdensome admin um, problem and allow them to focus on growth opportunities. At B3i, we believe that by solving market-level inefficiencies, we can free up companies to focus on these new growth opportunities. So a little bit more on how these problems manifest themselves. This admin problem manifests itself in manual, manual and paper-based processes that lead to high um, transaction costs. There's a lot of error and rework, and ultimately it results in a poor customer experience. Secondly, it leads to lack of standardization, and you have a lot of data that is lost from risk to capital. This increases complexity, it brings in additional um, capital costs. And then lastly, there's so many different sources of data with minimal system integration, which doesn't allow the insurance industry, which is a network of connected parties, to act as a network. There's also a high degree of contract uncertainty, and really this results in products that are far too costly. And when the industry looks at where the growth opportunities exist, 
in primarily in, in um, parts of Asia and Africa where they have what they call the protection gap. People with economic interests who can't afford to insure their, their economic interests, the high cost of distribution and the cost of, of contract admin mean that these markets um, are, are difficult to address and we hope to change that. So let me talk about the role of DLT in addressing this. And what I'd like to share with you is a quote from one of our board members at V3I. He is the head of Global Blockchain Center of Competence at Allianz Technology, the world's largest insurance company. And he says, it is difficult to overstate the impact that embracing new ways of conducting business will have on the financial service industry. This is evidenced by the remarkable efficiency gains demonstrated by initial results. In some cases, complex claim settlement times have been reduced from weeks to hours or even minutes. These results are due to companies sharing of standards, infrastructure, and operations of the platforms that they interact across. This comes from Bob Crozier, one of our board members at Allianz. So how is B3I doing this? What are we doing? We, we often talk about network platform ecosystem. First, we establish the network, and the network exists around our founding members, the, the um, 20 shareholders and our customers that are counterparts around our initial pro product, a uh, natural catastrophe excess of loss placement solution. We have reinsurers and insurers that transact for that product. So it's a, it's a great place to, to um, achieve critical match in a niche and establish the net network. So once the network is established, then we build the platform. The platform is really the standards and protocols and the services that we provide and our platform um, is a DLT platform based upon R3's quarter framework. Then the ecosystem. The ecosystem is a functionally rich ecosystem of partner applications that we seek to um, enable by providing the ability to rapidly develop applications, lots of functionality for end users, um, and where B3i is an enabler to accelerate the, the development of applications for customers. Our role in the ecosystem isn't to build end user functionality, it's to curate the ecosystems, to ensure standards. Key to us, one of those standards is interoperability. It's why we, why we use Corda because of their vision around interoperability and the global Corda network. But we also think of, of interoperability both within the broader ecosystem of the global Corda network and many industry verticals. But another aspect of that that is important to us is interoperability within the insurance industry. Risk is originated through often primary insurance um, policies and then also through large corporate policies. And these cascade through the insurance industry where they are sliced and diced and shared amongst multiple parties in large complex syndicated transactions. And we believe that uh, a, um, an industry data model that has a common definition of risk and events and contracts allows risk to move through the insurance ecosystem far more efficiently. And it's our aim to remove much of that, that friction by establishing these, the, the standards that are important to us. The, the new growth that I've spoken about, which, which comes from selling insurance in new ways and interacting with customers in different ways, is also one of the key aspects that's important for interoperability. We already see um, emerging opportunities with other networks where, for example, Marco Polo, a, another quarter-based DLT network in trade finance, um, has a requirement for insurance. And many of our customers and shareholders provide those services today in a far more analog way and to be able to be a, a, an additional distribution channel for those same insurance products to existing customers is important for them in the future. But there are also trends within the insurance um, industry where we see the way insurance being sold very differently. An example would be transport or mobility where we expect a trend of driverless cars and 
transport or mobility as a service to mean that there's less ownership of vehicles. And ultimately, insurance companies um, will no longer interface directly with the consumer that buys that application. But you would expect rather the provider of the service to access risk capital, insurance capital um, in a very uh, new and digital way. And much of B3I's ecosystem is there to allow a very old and conservative industry to digitally transform to um, enable new types of insurance in the future. So how do we accelerate adoption of this key foundational technology, DLT? I think change happens very, very slowly and then all at once, you wake up in a new world and change is upon you. It isn't linear. Before you know it, the future has arrived. And I think it's important as, as CEO of B3I, I don't see our role as hypothesizing about what the future will bring, but rather having the clarity of purpose to concretely build the future. We're there to, to make this happen. And it's very important to understand that we haven't done this alone. Um, this isn't something that's been dreamt up in our garages as a startup. We often um, have this, uh, refer to this ethos at B3I that we are by the market for the market. Um, I have a, a picture in my presentation of an event that was held with our customers. Um, it was a testing, a testing, a testathon, a testing hackathon, where we had many of our customers from insurers, reinsurers, brokers, all assembled over a two day period to try and break our software. And the energy in that room was palpable. The excitement in that room was palpable. And it, it was interesting for me that at a time where I'm wanting our, our, us to be more disciplined about being customer centric and, and, and uh, focus on the needs of the customer, I had pushback from one of our, one of our customers, one of our shareholders, who had, uh, had said they didn't think they were a customer, that they felt that this was their product. They built it, they collaborated with us. They're, they don't like the idea of an arm's length customer relationship. So they, they're deeply embedded in our process by which we do this. And that's, I think that's a, a very key aspect of successful adoption. I think one, one needs a number of things. You need strategic buy-in, so high level, high level top-down buy-in, but one ultimately needs bottom-up um, buy in too. One needs users that engage with your product, that are delighted by your product, that see the features that they want. And, and, and so it's very important that one does both this gets top down strategic buy in and bottom up user engagement. And I think understanding who one deals with um, within customers or potential customer organizations is very important. So I broadly classify our engagement as either strategic or innovation or business. And I think about them very differently. So um, because of B3I's role in the transformation of the global insurance industry, we, we have a lot of strategic buy-in. We, we exist to future-proof the insurance incumbents and to allow them to digitally transform um, so that they can interact amongst themselves more, more effectively. But one, one won't successfully drive adoption of products if the users ultimately aren't excited about your products. Um, if people don't feel the, that, that what you build addresses their daily need, one runs into challenges. Innovation budget is something that uh, we, we have a lot of interest um, because of um, blockchain as an as a, um, emerging technology or TLT as emerging technology, but it's often quite, quite fickle. Um, and I would ask the question of any company um, where, where they think about us as innovation, how they think about innovation. Do they think about innovation as something that they should be doing? Or do they think about innovation as the part of the, the, the company that is going to generate new lines of revenue in the next 10 years? Is it part of the business that needs to cannibalize their, their existing business? How do they allocate budget to innovation? So really the questions I am getting to are, is 
innovation of strategic importance to you or do you simply think it's the right thing to do? And if, if innovation is strategically important to you, I'm, I'm, I'm much more comfortable engaging with that type of uh, innovation department. But really the most honest engagement comes from the business, comes from the people asking the tough questions about return on investment, from the people saying, if I look at 18 months, two years, or however long, what is the payback period for my investment in this technology? And so, so that's, it's important that one um, addresses any cost concerns about new technologies being expensive, but really if you can, if you can pass the test of operations and business, um, it's, it's really the, um, the most important thing. And this is where I think another very important thing is understanding any business's key strategic priorities. So whilst we talk about um, administrative cost and efficiency, efficiency is something that every business wants to become more efficient. But when it comes down to key priorities, top line growth is often more important. So when, um, when, when people are pushed uh, to, to make a decision and you know, at the moment we, we see people's priorities, priorities being reshuffled, um, businesses are more excited about, um, about innovation, about technology that, gives, that creates new opportunities for them than, than, it, than they are about taking costs out of existing businesses. So, um, again, when we think about our network, we think about how we can create new opportunities, how the industry can address the protection gap, um, rather than a pure efficiency play. Um, and I think that's, that is, is one of the key elements of getting people excited about the future of this, this industry. It's about talking about developments in adjacent industries um, and where, where um, if, our existing, if the existing incumbents are existing shareholders and customers um, don't adopt this technology, they won't be able to service their customers, um, large commercial customers that use this technology um, to, to uh, provide provenance over their supply chain where they've got digital twins of assets that they want to insure. And, and they then reach out to business partners, insurers to provide coverage for that. Those that adopt this technology are well positioned to be able to better serve their customers and people are always looking for ways to delight their customers. I think another key aspect to, to adoption is understanding that this is just change management. This is about um, dealing with people and their fears and, and sometimes this technology gives them cause, to concern, cause for concern about their own roles. And so being open to understanding how people feel about this and addressing their specific needs, I think, is, a, is, a, is, is very key to, to um, ensuring that people use this technology. I think one, uh, one last closing point is I'd say as a CEO of a business, I don't think um, one ever builds a successful business on early adopters. There are a lot of people that come to technology because they have an itch to, to scratch. It's an intellectual exercise. They're interested in learning, but really one, one builds a sustainable business by people, business people who want to use the technology. And that is a key focus for us. It's why I, as the leader of B3I, want us to focus on customers and solving customers' problems and making sure that we use the right technology at the right time to solve those customers, solve those problems of our customers. I think really um, that, that's what I want to leave you with today. Um, and I, I look forward to any outreach you may have to B3I to learn more. Thank you very much. It was a rather long video. 
how to accelerate adoption is what he talked about. Uh, it uh, starts uh, with a gradual increase, but then uh, the change is uh, quite sudden. So when is the change coming, I asked. Uh, 2021, he said. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, waiting until next year. Uh, from uh, Leisure Tech, uh, uh, this is a new insurance uh, solution or, the, uh, or digitalizing the traditional approaches uh, leads to what they're proposing. Uh, once uh, the video that was taken, he said he wanted to have the video retaken in front of the ocean. And so uh, he um, um, redid the video uh, in front of the ocean. So there's a lot of noise, uh, the waves of sound, uh, the sound of waves that can be heard, but we hope you do enjoy the presentation. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Iran. I'm the uh, co-founder and uh, chief executive officer of Legitech. And Legitech, we've developed a digital insurance framework. We started about uh, two years ago working together with our uh, insurance companies uh, and systems integration uh, partners as design partners uh, to deliver the uh, Legitech uh, digital insurance framework, blockchain-based. Uh, we started with some use cases around health insurance and motor insurance and recently we've uh, launched our parametric and peer-to-peer -peer insurance solution uh, which is based on the uh, Coda Ledger. Um, our our uh, insurance solution takes advantage of uh, the blockchain infrastructure, things like increased transparency, increased security, what you see is what I see, and being able to share information across the entire insurance ecosystem. Uh, we help to simplify the way people consume insurance, we shorten the end-to-end uh, -end customer journey, and we make the whole uh, process of uh, consuming insurance much faster and uh, user-friendly. Insurance companies can define new insurance products in a much faster way, in a matter of hours and days versus uh, months and years, which this is how it used to take. Uh, the customer is uh, communicating with the insurance company or the insurance broker through a digital app on his mobile. Uh, we have an API to the existing policy administration system uh, that helps uh, the interaction between the uh, insurance company and the uh, customer environment, we have a business rules engine, a smart contract engines, and mechanisms to improve fraud detection and prevention by managing the entire ecosystem, data, etc., on the blockchain environment. Uh, in the example you're going to see in a minute, uh, Suzuki san, about 50 years old, he lives in the Tokyo prefecture, and he's about to acquire. Uh, parametric insurance solution based on the uh, legitimate platform. You will see uh, the demo how he interacts with uh, his insurance company getting a fully uh, digital equipment, uh, digital experience uh, where he receives a new offer for uh, pandemic insurance from his uh, insurance provider. Um, the offer is received on uh, his mobile app. He can fill in his information, his personal details, and based on that, he will receive a quote that's provided by the insurance company for the period he selected to get coverage for uh, COVID-19. Parametric insurance is uh, micro-insurance. It's normally an additional to an existing uh, health insurance and so on. Uh, to cover some risks. He gets the offer on his mobile app, he can sign it, and as soon as he did, he, he pays the premium, either use PayPal, credit card, or mobile payment system, and the insurance uh, policy is active. Now, in the parametric insurance, the minute that something happened, the minute that uh, the insurance events occurs, he doesn't have to submit a claim. We're going to emulate uh, the rise of COVID-19 level in the Tokyo Prefecture. And as soon as it happens, 
claim is automatically being triggered and a payment is being transferred uh, to his PayPal account. Suzuki-san will be notified and as soon as he checks uh, his PayPal account, we will see that uh, the money is already there. Biometric insurance can be used for many cases, supplemental for health insurance, for pandemic, flood insurance, earthquake, crop insurance, and so on. Uh, at Legitech we provide solutions both for uh, traditional insurance uh, companies and traditional insurance products as you know them today, home insurance, motor insurance, health insurance, where we help to automate the quarter claim process, we make it more efficient, we provide automated underwriting capabilities, automated uh, uh, claim settlement, and we shorten the end-to-end -end customer journey. However, our primary focus is on the new world. In the new world, we introduce new types of uh, insurance solutions, like parametric solutions and peer-to-peer -peer solutions, peer, peer insurance. We've discussed parametric insurance at length, and we've seen the demo, but in the peer-to-peer uh, -peer insurance, it's a group of people joining together to share a risk. This is basically going back to basics. This is how insurance started hundreds of years ago, where a pool of people put their money together in order to cover them from different risks. started with merchants and the ships all over the globe, and today with peer-to-peer -peer insurance, a group of people that share the same passions, for example, for the on uh, motorcycles, certain type of uh, classic cars, or whatever, can share the risk and take advantages of blockchain in order to manage the consortium, uh, manage the decision of who is going to be admitted into the pool, uh, whether claims are going to be paid or not, and basically having consensus management between them. Uh, we've also implemented our solutions uh, successfully with several customers. Bahati Aksa in India is an example of how we help them to automate uh, motor insurance claims, uh, performing uh, automated uh, analysis of damage and uh, managing the entire claim processing uh, in an automated fashion, helping them do it for, with over 20,000 claims uh, per month. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you. Uh, there has been uh, some lapse uh, on our part. Uh, the slide uh, should have been on the screen. And so people here could only hear him uh, speaking. And so you must have been wondering what was happening. He showed two examples of insurance. What was parametric insurance? An example of that uh, would be uh, uh, if uh, one uh, contracts COVID-19, uh, insurance money will be paid out uh, immediately. And there was an application demonstration which was included. Um, uh, that's uh, due to our uh, mishandling that it wasn't shown. Uh, automatically, uh, insurance claims uh, would be triggered and payment would be made. And on the end, uh, towards the end, uh, the bike, the uh, motorbike was very noisy. But he was talking about motorbike insurance, the so Harley Davidson and other. Uh, motorbikes, uh, there's a P2P uh, insurance, and they, they have a solution for this. And uh, that was uh, before the present insurance system was made. It was a system uh, like the mutual aid uh, system, which he, he uh, thinks he would be able to uh, materialize. Uh, it's not uh, old insurance, but what he was saying was new world, new type of uh, insurance. Uh, uh, it, under the insurance law, P2P, as to whether that would be included in the law or not, uh, is a sensitive issue. Uh, uh, and uh, so uh, he says that he is uh, using a DLT to resolve this issue. I'm sorry uh, for the oversight. Uh, perhaps it was hard for you to understand. Uh, uh, but we will upload this uh, on our site. Uh, so we ask for your kind uh, cooperation. Thank you very much. Uh, Sonobe-san uh, will now explain about uh, Deloitte Thomas's uh, approaches uh, in the area of, of insurance. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to uh, talk about uh, using blockchain technology uh, to share information on death uh, and uh, 
uh, the possibility of such a platform. We'd like to talk about uh, our initiatives. Uh, very briefly, if I may introduce myself, uh, my name is uh, Sun, um, uh, Mitsuhiro Sonobe. Uh, financial industry blockchain team is where I work. Uh, mainly uh, blockchains uh, provided to uh, financial institutions or other in, uh, sectors, uh, uh, consortium uh, planning and operations and uh, thinking about use cases together or implementations is what we do most recently. Uh, I'll be uh, talking about uh, uh, insurance uh, consortium uh, planning and management, uh, uh, trade uh, information uh, collaboration, uh, uh, and digital uh, uh, insurance. Uh, this was discussed in the earlier session. STO business uh, uh, is uh, centrally what we uh, support. Uh, so uh, let me talk. Uh, get into the substantive uh, part of my presentation. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, it's hard. It may be hard to see. First of all. The life insurance uh, centered solutions uh, uh, is uh, what this is about. In the life insurance industry, uh, the environment uh, is as uh, summarized here. Firstly, uh, if we look at the uh, government uh, and the society, SDGs, and uh, social issues, the social challenge uh, solution is uh, what is uh, called for. Uh, for uh, companies to address, uh, companies should address not only profit, but uh, in terms of uh, politics, uh, uh, re resolution of social challenges is what is being asked of uh, the uh, insurance industry in terms of financial administration. Uh, Customer-centric uh, should be the uh, stance uh, toward management. And uh, voluntary efforts in terms of uh, creativity uh, on the uh, part of the industry to uh, be more customer-centric is what we're required to do. On the other hand, if we look at the economic uh, aspect, uh, we have negative interest rates. Uh, domestic economic growth uh, is uh, stagnating. And on the lower left, we have a society uh, where a company uh, strategies uh, perhaps need to be changed on the part of insurance uh, entities. Uh, specifically, uh, customers have changed. Uh, we have to make for further convenience uh, for the uh, customer and uh, make for a better customer experience. And uh, lastly, in the field of uh, technology, uh, these uh, requirements uh, and uh, uh, things uh, that uh, we want to realize, uh, we have to have the technology to back this up, and uh, we need to uh, promote uh, technology. And uh, so uh, on the part of the in insurance industry, uh, there are uh, broadly uh, two things uh, that we should pursue uh, at the risk of being repetitive. Uh, 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 cross-industry efforts uh, to address uh, social issues, that's number one, and the thorough improvement of customer service or reduce uh, operation, business operation costs. And uh, as a base uh, to uh, do this, uh, to leverage uh, new technology. That is the situation that we find ourselves in at the moment. Next, uh, uh, I will be uh, talking about a use case. One of the social uh, challenges uh, is uh, uh, the uh, bereaved family's uh, procedures uh, after a family member dies uh, tends to be very uh, cumbersome. Uh, with the uh, aging of society, uh, the number of deaths uh, is on the rise. Uh, it's uh, constantly going upward. And the government is talking about uh, the 100-year life. And uh, it's thinking about the uh, policies uh, to deal with the aging society. And uh, along with this, uh, the, uh, the life insurance uh, companies, uh, in a context where there are uh, people who are living uh, alone, uh, uh, solitary lives, uh, and uh, considering uh, the procedures uh, at the time of death uh, is uh, very cumbersome, uh, there's a need to try to change this. And uh, this is what we're thinking about. So up until now, insurance companies, uh, um, have they done nothing up until now? That's not the case. Uh, as is often said, uh, DX uh, digitalization has been uh, promoted uh, to a great extent. As uh, this uh, figure shows, on the uh, right-hand side, uh, the blue part is uh, where companies can make effort uh, to make improvements or to make to shorten 
uh, the process uh, after in, uh, receiving uh, data and documents. Uh, this is about uh, uh, payment of uh, death uh, benefits. And so uh, if uh, the insured uh, passes away uh, and uh, up until the time that payment is made, uh, it's uh, considerably digitalized and uh, has been made considerably efficient. Now, the red part uh, in hospitals or when accidents occur and when people uh, die, uh, procedures begin uh, after they die. Uh, and uh, there's exchanges uh, between the uh, insurance company and the insurance company starts the workflow after receiving notification of death and uh, the time up to this point uh, uh, was hard to accelerate or digitalize or to uh, conserve uh, manpower and I believe uh, we believe that to be the case and going forward not only within companies but uh, before companies receive uh, the data, the process and customer experience uh, before that point is very important. And uh, by using blockchain uh, solutions, uh, customer uh, procedures, uh, procedures for the customers uh, might uh, be simplified or it may be uh, rationalized. Uh, so uh, this is uh, concerning what I talked about. In uh, North America, uh, this uh, endeavor has already started. Uh, in uh, North America as well, uh, non-payment of uh, cash uh, in death cases is a social issue. Uh, geographical conditions uh, sometimes uh, make it uh, difficult because some states have a very large area and uh, insurance agencies are not uh, evenly uh, spaced and located. And so this has had been a uh, social issue in the United States or in North America. Uh, there's a law uh, regarding uh, uh, unclaimed uh, property. Uh, insurance uh, companies immediately must pay the uh, balance uh, of insurance money that they owe. And from the regulatory uh, standpoint, uh, there were was a uh, uh, demand to pay. And so this that's why this uh, approach was taken. Uh, black um, chain or death master file is what it is called. The name uh, might be questionable, but uh, uh, death master file, social security death master file is uh, information on the blockchain uh, which is uh, shared. And the ho with hospitals or insurance companies or public uh, entities uh, connect to update uh, information and by so doing death uh, related information uh, uh, can be uh, confirmed in a timely manner and that was a system which was created and likewise in Japan uh, different uh, life insurance companies uh, have been asked to participate and the same uh, blockchain uh, based uh, uh, death information uh, sharing a platform to be created uh, so that fintech companies and different entities uh, by sharing this information uh, we feel may be able to uh, resolve these uh, challenges that we have and that's the uh, technical uh, background N versus N, uh, or one versus N is how we explain this. N versus N uh, ex uh, interchange and information exchange uh, is uh, very suitable uh, for blockchains to be used. So uh, sharing of uh, death information, uh, we think, uh, is an area where this could be leveraged. And this is uh, the last uh, slide. Uh, by sharing uh, death information, insurance company or government agencies, hospitals, or of uh, most importance, a customer convenience uh, will be improved. Or when there's a large uh, natural uh, disaster, uh, promptly, insurance uh, death benefits will be paid out. Uh, death uh, confirmation uh, can be done quickly 
and uh, this uh, is realizable uh, through blockchains. That's what we think. And that is all uh, with regard to my description of the use case. Thank you very much for the presentation. I was willing to ask you questions, but uh, we've come to the end of the seminar. I was uh, hoping to ask you uh, what kind of developments you're expecting going forward. Well, today in my presentation, I only talked about uh, uh, death information sharing, and, but uh, this is a kind of information that uh, will address the pain points of many people in the society. That's why I'm I introduced this use case. But in the same token, uh, environment or CO2 blockchain, something like a CO2 blockchain, uh, we could have uh, various uh, parametric or telemetric insurance solutions could be connected and uh, combined in order to alleviate environmental burden uh, and environmental load. Thank you very much for that. My apologies for running over time, but uh, with this, we would like to conclude this session. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please join me in a big round of applause to the two on the stage.